Welcome. Thank you for stumbling upon this video. My brothers, my sisters, I want to tackle the Bible. The Bible has been written by man. They say that the Bible is influenced by God. And this I give it credence. As God is in everything and everyone. God is not a man. God is infinite energy. It's the beginning energy. It's the energy that exists on all planes at all times. It's the very fabric of everything interwoven in our lives. Understand that on all fronts we are being waged wars for spirituality and it's our spirituality that will cause for good or cause for bad. There is no one else in this world that's going to tell you who you are, what you are, what you can do and what you can't do except for yourself. Thirty years of my life has been spent ignoring the truth, the almighty truth. See, people have for the entirety of our existence speculated the meaning behind life. One of the most powerful tools that we have in life is the scriptures to which we base the foundations of our existence. Without those things, If you subscribe to science, and you believe a Big Bang Theory, believe in evolution, probably feel like we've derived from apes, or you may have some other cross-thought process of how we were seeded by aliens. These are the thoughts of everyone out there the majority of people out there I too also have those thoughts those that was my prescribed viewpoint for many years you see what I what happened a while ago is somebody planted a thought and that thought caused me to spiral out of control not in a in a physical sense, not in a material sense, but just to, to spiral out of control into a, another realm of thoughts, so to speak. Almost as if I was looking from the outside of the glass, looking in, and then I continued to question myself further and further and further back. I'm always on this, this face, this place. The person, it's not a person, but the entity that controls all this is Satan. Owns all this is Satan. See, God is finite. God is the, the understanding of God. The truest essence of God is love. It's positive light, positive energy. Again, you can have varying degrees of energy. You can have positive energy. You can have negative energy, but you have energy. And at its purest form is positivity, love, light. You see, every person on this planet is born without any thought. Perhaps there is thought. I'm not too sure. I can't remember it. But those thoughts that are there, they're the most pure form as long as that loving environment, that nurturing environment did exist during that child's growing up in the womb.
If the mother and the father had nothing but love and nice things to say to each other, that is a positive experience for the murmurs that that baby would be hearing. But also the energy that that's uh, transferring between the mother and the womb and the child. Think about this for a second. Because in it, there is no thoughts. You are the purest of souls when you are born in this way. And if you are born in the, that way, you understand God's law. You understand love, provided you come from a mother that's going to then caress that child with nothing but love, as well as the father, if the father's there. In those few minutes of that child's birth, aside from the violence of being taken out of your womb, being slapped on the butt, um, being manhandled naked, having a suction cup thrown down your mouth, that in itself is violence. But prior to that, you just knew love and positivity. And from there, and from then on, you were taught. You were first taught by your parents, then from there, whatever outside influences, wherever you went, Again, you're observing all these things and taking this data in. You might not thinking of, be thinking about it, but you're still taking all this in. And at that point, you start shaping your viewpoint of how you view the world and your place in it and how the world works. And if those things don't happen in a positive way, thus starts our dissension. We all know that the education is signed off and certified by those in power. It's created by those in power, for those in power, as well as the betterment of the people. But that knowledge contained is specifically the formulations and the way the world works and what you're prescribed to and whatever that is is what your world is and you continue this fashion for years and years and years and years and years years and years and years and years and years of brainwashing knowledge into you it's not knowledge so much as it's something somebody's perspective it may be universal knowledge it may not but in there um, there isn't a single human being on this planet aside from a few who have never experienced that. They still have knowledge. Perhaps their knowledge comes from the universe. I love the Bible in two parts. Really, my favorite is one part. And that part is Genesis. And the whole world is actually foretold and your place in this world foretold in Genesis. But the problem is that what we're told and what we're fed, that knowledge comes from someone else's perspective. Not many of us are worthy of channeling um, God or our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father could be an alien. Because in, and I don't mean our Heavenly Heavenly Father, the existence plane, I'm talking about a story that's foretold and foretold and foretold about gods and that and that's where the alien theory is very interesting because realistically um, if you twist it that way and you perceive uh, God as being an alien being then in that circumstance you would understand the natural jealousy of things but the Heavenly Father in its purest most everything form God infinite. God infinite is always love and positivity. 
as a child born, you know the right between right and wrong. And you always will know that until the lines are blurred and skewed and you learn different things by what you're viewing in society and that information where that, that, that that's being projected to you. You know, in, uh, in Genesis 1, chapter 1, line 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was out without form. It was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that light and that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Without light, you wouldn't have darkness. Without darkness, you wouldn't have light. When you go into a room that's dark, the darkness will always consume, provided there's no light. But now, no matter how big the darkest room would be, it could be the size of the stadium that this man is standing in, preaching in this way. If this entire stadium was dark and you couldn't see in front of your face, if you lit a light or a light was lit in that dark place, you would see it. No matter how far you are, you would see that light. And that's why darkness always consumes or tries to consume the light. And provided that light allows it to itself to be compromised by the darkness, whether it be wind or what have you. As long as that light stays lit, it will never, ever, 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 ever let or allow the darkness to extinguish the light. God saw that the light and it was good, and divided it from darkness. He called it light, day, darkness, night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Here's where it gets really interesting now. Is that God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. This message has been diluted since Copernicus's theories, which were even predated, even recorded long thousands of years prior to him, about the world being round and that the world isn't in the middle of the universe and there isn't a firmament covering the world and then they created terminologies and terms to realistically explain away these theories and this thought process they never had the evidence to actually support this. There was no scientific proof or ability to achieve such proof during that time when these thought processes, equations, which were all hypothetical, were put in a mainstream view. You can obviously see that questioning the firmament itself just questioning the firmament would have you questioning God and by questioning God I don't mean Almighty God but I just mean the world that we live in because God wants us to believe in the Heavenly Father and the Heavenly Father's laws and live our life according to his laws that's all he asks and that we worship no other, but that's where it comes into play is that the, the other, worshiping the other, 
That's where the trick lies. Can you believe that? That's where the trick lies, everybody. Is to question the Heavenly Father and Heavenly Father's laws. That's the ultimate backlash right there. Once that happens, our Heavenly Father has His children who are created in His image turn their backs on their Father. That's quite interesting. God called the firmament, which were above the waters, above the firmament, heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of waters that he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb, yielding seed, and fruit tree, yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made also, or he made the stars also. This is interesting because here we're finding out that the sun and the moon were created by God to basically uh, tell us when the, the different times of day, the day and the night. And God is not saying it's not millions and billions of light years away. It doesn't say we're in a solar system. It says that these things circle us basically is what it's getting down to on this earth plane. It says there is no oceans, there is only seas separating the nation. And if you go back and look at a bunch of old, really, really old maps created by sailors, kings and queens and conquestors, you're going to find out a very interesting picture of how the world is. And if you subscribe to a lot of like occult, um, Christian type, believer type, prophecy type folks, the so-called truthers, you're going to find out that they blame all this stuff on Freemasons. Which is fine to an nth degree. They're also pushing flatter theories, but at the end of the day, they do so with a lot of hatred in their heart, which tells me they're obviously not all the way in. They're not fully embracing this knowledge and what they're doing is they're causing a lot of other people to get behind them. Jim Jones actually did this as well. Lest you forget. He caused a whole lot of people to get up enraged and out and, and want to leave where they were living and donate all their belongings and all their earnings to this man and follow him in his conquest. They'll always ask you to follow them. They'll always ask you to prescribe and say, this is the way it is. I'm never going to tell you this is the way it is. I'll always ask that you question the way it is for yourself. And you figure out your life and the way you see it and the way you're in it for yourself. But I, 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 I share these things to help you, perhaps help you in your questions. Perhaps give you another side of consideration. 
But at the end of the day, I don't want you to do anything but believe what you believe to be true. When God created man, he did so in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female created he them. God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and every other living thing that moveth upon the earth. God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, and which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, where therein is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, and it was good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. I just want to fast forward really quick. Right down to where uh, Genesis uh, chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the, life of, uh, the breath of life and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that it is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And the tree of knowledge and good and evil. So the tree of life would give everlasting life for an, a long period of time. The tree of life, there are some movies about forests and how there really isn't any forests. Perhaps these are the trees that are being spoken of here in the, the Garden of Eden. Some people think that the Garden of Eden is Antarctica or a place hidden within Antarctica. And they have a lot of different spots to back up these claims as well through the history, uh, documented history over the last 100 years. There are people poking holes in these thoughts and this thought process on, on what's going on there. But it's very interesting to, to see those thoughts and those theories for sure. I find this entire area of uh, Adam and Eve to be very interesting based on the fact that in, in this time frame, uh, you find God speaking with uh, man and bringing Eden in as well. God gave one commandment. He gave he literally gave him everything. This Adam being creature, character. And the Lord commanded the man in chapter uh, 2 verse 16 saying of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil so this means that Adam never knew good and never knew evil. Adam just knew. Does that make sense? There is no good and there is no evil. There is just being. There is being naked in the forest and being in harmony with everything. Now God has given Adam everything and dominion over everything in Eden except for these things, but at the end of the day, everything is, is Adam's in Eden already, without thought, without knowledge between good and evil. That means that he was just being, probably meditating. Think of your meditative state. There is no good, there is no evil, there is just being, and that is Adam 
at this point in, in this present juncture. And I like that thought process. That's a very strong, poignant view that really strikes out to me. You can say a lot of things at the beginning, a lot of things at the end. You can say a lot of things in the middle. But this one thought process and this one line here is a massive, massive hit for me when it comes down to uh, knowledge and where knowledge comes from. You understand that knowledge is knowledge, but it's not universal knowledge everything's universal knowledge i guess if there uh, what is what is then is now and what is now is then um knowledge has always been there but it was it was it was after adam i mean it was before adam it was before adam for sure but adam did not have that in his life and uh that's just really interesting. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For on the day that thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. And what he means there is not physically. A lot of people interpret this as physically. What he means is that you're metaphysically going to die. Um, you're metaphysically or you're emotionally or knowledge-wise, you are going to die out of your connection with the Lord. The Lord wants your connection. The Lord has your connection before thought, before knowledge. That tells me that Lord God, uh, Yahweh, or Heavenly Father, his, his, his connection is before thought. His connection is feeling. Obviously love. I'd always say love over negativity, but even in negativity, he's still there. He's just before everything. If you get what I'm saying there, definitely before everything. And when being before everything, that's really crazy. You have to really compartmentalize it and look outside of your body, outside of every physical thing, and just know that he exists in, in everything, in the bottom line, before everything. He is there. And I like that thought process. That's what gets me hooked into this entire theory that I have. Is this one thought process of that. That all thought and knowledge is good and evil and comes after God. Not before it. God is always before it. So then basically... You know, God creates Eve, companion to Adam. So that happened. He gave names to all the beasts, all the animals. I don't necessarily like that um, the people who wrote this book put man in front of woman and that woman is created by a piece of man. But in uh, verse 25, chapter 2, they, it stated they're, they're both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Again, no thought, no knowledge. So then a serpent um, possessed by the mighty God of this veil... Satan spoke to Eve. He said, Ye hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. 
But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God, God hath set, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye surely not die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Knowing knowledge. But this serpent is Satan, and the trickster always wants to put it in God's faces that uh, and the reason why the serpent or Satan wants to put it in God's uh, face is because God kicks Satan out for uh, rebelling against God's word. So Satan rebels against, against his heavenly father. There's probably reasonings for that and probably jealousy and anger that God created because God didn't create angels in his vision. God created man in his vision and woman from man. And they had a special heart, a special place in their heavenly father's eyes. And that made that servant, the angels, some very jealous and angry. And because of that, we have a rebellion from Satan. And so Satan's rebellion is more of a universal and, and always thing. Where Satan always wants to tempt man and woman to choose him over your heavenly father. That is the big battle here, folks, that we're seeing. And the biggest battle on this planet. These people are waging these wars. Everything that we are subscribed to now is penetrating us deep in within our psyches causing us to spiral out of control and to take the knowledge of good and evil from the serpent as sold by the serpent thousands of years ago, as read by us as youngsters growing up as Christians, as elders in Christian, just anyone reading the Bibles and, and the knowledges being passed along, written by man, um, and being skewed by men and these men that are telling us of how we should interpret this knowledge you should read it and interpret it for yourself you have to understand that you have to do so with love and positivity in your heart and a connection with your heavenly father first and foremost and know that the knowledge of thought in any negative form isn't coming from your Heavenly Father. And unfortunately, in our brains, the only thing we ever hear is that negativity. And everything positive in there will eventually turn to negativity because, unfortunately, this world is just rife with Satan and his demons. And our handlers are the people in charge of this also worship him openly worship him in front of us hiding this worship in front of us which makes it even worse which makes it even more powerful which is why we live in such a cursed world that we see right now and so eve surely enough is tricked into eating this And at that point, we have the conversion of the first. And every human being since then, with the exception of so very, very few, which are then persecuted by all of us in every way, shape, and form because we're all rife with sin and we're all rife with a connection with our God, Satan. That's every single one of us. No matter how much you try to deny it, there isn't a single one of us that is so pure of love without some kind of evil inside. So that's where we're at, folks. 
And God didn't kill, obviously. Heavenly Father didn't kill Adam and Eve. He banished them and said, okay, you're on your own. Because they broke the laws of the Lord. But that is where Jesus' message gets really cool. Because Jesus and through Jesus, and, and Jesus' name is in Jesus, but for all intents and purposes, throughout the last few hundred years, Jesus' name has become Jesus. It should be Yahshua. It should be the name of, uh, of what he was given in the region that he was given. In the Hebrew, I'm guessing... Mm, I don't, I'm not Hebrew, so I can't pronounce it. Some say Yahshua, Yahua, Yeshua, uh, Yahshua, um, as well as Yahweh represent the names of the uh, Heavenly Father that we are meant to worship, as well as uh, His uh, chosen vessel, along with the Holy Ghost. However, all of us are meant to think about Jesus in the Bible and Jesus uh, it's interesting just kind of blows my mind away I think um, I'm also kind of uh, drawn to Matthew when Jesus goes to study in the wilderness or to meditate in the wilderness and he's tempted by the devil. And the devil says to him that he'll give him dominion over everything. having a hard time finding it right here. I think I found it here. So quoting from Matthew, Then Jesus was led into the desert by the Spirit to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. This makes me think of Eid and Ramadan and uh, Muslim faith. And how we uh, or Christians don't practice this, but they do in Islam, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, but anyway, he was hungry. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Not by bread alone does man live, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him into the holy city and uh, set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Uh, the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will give his angels charge over you, and upon their hands they will bear you up, uh, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, It is written further, You shall not tempt the Lord your God against the devil uh, took him <clears throat> to a very high mountain and show him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. So this is where I feel like this is through meditation and visions he's seeing this and, and Satan is showing him these visions and, and this one vision is the key uh, to all. And this is a very, very important one here uh, that is just, it, it's supposed to be bolded and and and. and oh, held really high up uh, because this is the message that you need to know. Uh, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all the glory of them. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And Yahshua said to him, be gone, Satan. 
for it is written, The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. And the devil left him. Huh. That is it, everybody. That is the biggest message that we all need to come to understand and know is that Satan is the destroyer. Satan is the owner. Satan is everything in this world. And we shouldn't be tricked by him and for him. But that is the grips of everything that we see when we turn on the television and we see the news and everything that we're watching on media. Everything that is uh, written is doing so to shape that perspective and to continue down that knowledge between good and evil. <clears throat> I hate to break it, but everyone's saying that we're going to eventually come to a higher consciousness. Uh, I still feel like the consciousness or the conscious awareness that we're going to come into is still going to be led and, and bound by our handlers um, as not many people are waking up to this. And, and those that are waking up to this, we're so few and so far between. Realistically, we're still in, we're, we're on the outside of the fence, but we're, we're looking in. We're trying to tempt those or tell those out there hey, this message, they're just not willing or able to or want to accept it. It's just, it's too much for them. It's too far gone. It's going to basically corrupt the foundations of their world and their existence and have them questioning every thought process they've ever come to know. And that's just too much for people nowadays. Nobody is able to accept someone else's thought process when it comes down to being something that isn't their own. And that's really a shame. Because in there lies the dialogue that's necessary in order to get to another path. All these worlds that we see out there that are fighting, breeding hate, all that is a message that is just being chosen to be broadcasted to us. Because in every single place on this world lies family, children, love, and the need for bare essentials. And the bare essentials that we need is just clean water, clean air, and unharmed, untainted natural resources such as like regular plants. We don't have that. We never will have that. Our children's children will never ever see that. And it just makes me sad that that's the, the existence that I have to accept that I'm in. But I'm going to continue to make these videos and share this knowledge and have you questioning these thoughts like I am. And just talking about God. Thanks for watching.